watering hole is my first favorite thing. Good one, Willow. Thanks. And now it's time for my favorite meal, breakfast. I could eat. What's next, Willow? You'll see. The Amazon rainforest? That's right. For my next favorite thing, zip lining through the canopy! Yay! 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 Are we in Alaska? That's right. To see my favorite animal. Polar, Polar bears! bears! I can't believe it's still morning. Yeah. We've had breakfast for breakfast. Breakfast for lunch. Breakfast for snack. It's been morning for the whole day. Hmm. And we still haven't surprised Willow. Surprise! <gasps> Autopilot on. Audrey, set course for Earth orbit. Autopilot on. Setting course for Earth orbit. So, how do you like my birthday so far? Isn't it the best birthday ever? It's the longest birthday ever. I know. You want to know why? Yes! I'll show you. I'll be the sun and Marco, you be the Earth. Sure. Audrey, lower cabin lights. On the part of the Earth facing the sun, it's day. Yeah, and on the part of the Earth that's facing away from the sun, it's night. The Earth is always turning. Marco, turn slowly in a circle. It takes 24 hours for the Earth to rotate, to go from day to night back to day again. So we started one place where it was morning, the savanna, and kept flying in the same direction, towards morning in another place. Transforming to Polo Galactic. Polo Galactic entering Earth orbit. Ooh. Look, there's Earth. Day on one side, night on the other. Beautiful. My absolutely favorite, favorite place. I think this is the right time. Surprise! Surprise! Wow, Polos, thanks! Happy, Happy birthday, birthday Willow. Willow! Willow, best birthday ever! Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <Whee>! <laughs> I wonder how many satellites are in orbit. There are thousands. Whoa! What? Whoa! Ah! The satellite we're visiting and many others like it are machines that have been launched into orbit. They send and receive signals to and from the Earth so that we can communicate with each other. Wow! So Corby and Lily's call had to go all the way up here before the signal got sent to us? Not just their call, everybody's calls. And videos. Look, weather reports. La 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 <laughs> la la. And, and music. music. So without satellites, we can't call our friends, watch shows, or even know if it's going to rain? Wow. Let's see if we can see what's wrong with this satellite. Hold on. Whoa, wow. There's the problem. Oh, the antenna is bent. It can't send and receive signals from Earth if it's damaged. Well, I guess I better go straighten things out. Wait, you mean the antenna, right? You're going to go straighten out the antenna. <sighs> That's right, Chester, the antenna. Oh, good. Just wanted to make sure. Ugh. Whoa, whoa. Yes, I made it. Great, Marco. Now go over to the bent piece. Whoa! Whoa! <gasps> Phew! Okay, now straighten it, then tighten the bolt so it stays put. <gasps> it's stuck! <sighs> yeah, Marco, you did it! Way to push! Whoa! 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 Oof! Uh, I'm okay. 
Is it working? Corby, Lily, can you hear me? Hi, Polos! It works! Yeah, <laughs> all right! Way to go, Marco! We're happy to see you, too, because we've got a big problem. What? We forgot to pack spoons. Last time I ate soup without a spoon, it wasn't pretty. Huh? Oh! <laughs> Message received. We'll bring some. Hey, where's my drill? Great work, Polos. There's just one last thing left to do. Lift off! Whoa! Wait, we're lifting off already? Not yet. We're training to lift off. I'm flying us in a test loop to show us what it feels like to lift off. Whoa! 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 When we zoom up really fast, this is what we'll feel. High G-forces! This means we'll feel heavier! Oh, oh wow! Lily! Wow. And when we get to space, this is what we'll feel. Low G-forces. We'll feel lighter, like we're weightless. Yeah! Won't that be fun, Willow? Oh, I won't be floating, Marco. This pilot's got to stay focused. Is everyone feeling okay? I'm good! Yeah. Affirmative. Great! Then we're ready to be Astro Polos. Audrey, change to Polo Galactic and begin countdown, please. Polo Galactic launch in five, four, three, two, one, liftoff. Off complete. Welcome to space, Polos. You may now unbuckle your seatbelts and begin floating around in the cabin. Hey! <laughs> Whee! <laughs> this is really <laughs> Willow, you've got to try this. Weightlessness is the best. I'm sure it is, but someone has to pilot the ship. Set it on autopilot. That's just for emergencies. It doesn't have to be but I always fly the ship. Okay, if you're sure. Oh, oh, this is awesome! Yeah. Look at me! Oh, yeah. Look at me! I'm <laughs> Being weightless looks like fun. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Whoa! Hmm. Oh! Maybe I could use autopilot just for a few seconds. Audrey? Autopilot for me, please. Autopilot activated. <gasps> wow! Hello. <laughs> I'm sure glad you could make it. Me too. On Earth, gravity keeps our feet on the ground, but in space, being weightless rocks. Yeah! Fishies, not froggies. When these tadpoles get older. They're going to become froggies. Some animals, like frogs, have bodies that change from one form to another as they grow. That's called metamorphosis. Mother frogs lay eggs. When the eggs hatch, tadpoles come out. Tadpoles are baby frogs. Hmm. The tadpoles have long tails and live and breathe underwater, just like fish do. Uh-huh. Fishies. Yeah, but watch this. As the tadpoles get older, their bodies change. Legs! Right! First, they grow their back legs and then their front legs. And they don't have to stay underwater all the time. They can come out on land. As they change, their tails get shorter and shorter until they look like that. Frogs are so cool! Yeah! Hmm! Yeah! 
Coco. Lucky. Now glows. Cool. And glows. And glows up. But Nash, that's not how you're growing. No, Woggies. No, only some animals like frogs change form as they grow, but you won't. You'll stay the same as you grow. Just like these animals. You'll just get bigger. No wings. No wings, but a much bigger you. Eh, uh, just Nash? Yeah, always Nash, but bigger. Okay. <laughs> wow, Lion Nash! I like it. It would be nice to turn into a lion. Or to grow a tail. Or wings. Now that is cool. But Nash is going to stay Nash. And that's great. He's just going to get bigger. Yeah. Big Nash! See? Whoa! Whoa. It's a really big Nash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's an insect pushing a ball of poop. It looks like a kind of beetle. What would such a little thing want with such a big ball of poop? You don't think it's gonna eat it? Ew! Ew. Uh, let's look it up. It's a dung beetle. Dung? What's that? Dung is another word for poop. And yes, it's going to eat it. Yuck! Why? It says here that whenever an animal eats something, not all of it gets digested. Some tiny undigested bits end up in its dung. And that's what dung beetles eat? Yes. They also get water from the dung. Okay, this time I'm going to say it. Yuck! Where's it going? Yeah, if they're going to eat dung, why not eat it right here? Yeah, there's plenty. They bury it so they can eat it later? And they lay their eggs in the dung balls. It looks like it's working really hard. That ball is huge in comparison to the beetle. Dung beetles are the strongest insect. It can move a ball over a thousand times its weight. That's like you pulling a school bus, Nash. Wow. But that's not all. Dung beetles help the environment of the savannah by burying and eating tons of dung produced by other animals. You mean they help to keep this place clean? Yes. Plus, flies lay eggs and dung. So by eating and burying so much of it, the dung beetles stop the fly eggs from hatching. So, fewer flies. That's amazing. Actually, dung beetles are amazing. Dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle. We've got a dirty job that someone's got to do. They're small but mighty and they're tidy too. We're lucky there's a bug that's willing to lug around so much poop. They go to work every single day with a tumbling dance that looks like play. But if you had to do a job with poo, would you? Lily, wherever you find hermit crabs, you usually find shells around it, too. I hope so. Thanks, Chester. <laughs> nice. <gasps> More. Bye-bye. Bye, Nash. Ooh, these ones are pretty. <gasps> My shells? What, 
Where did they go? Mm, huh? Nope. <laughs> Polos, have any of you seen my seashells? They're gone. Gone? No way! We'll help you search for them. Where's Nash? <laughs> uh... <laughs> ah! <Ooh. gasps> right there. Oh, sorry. It's okay, Nash. We'll rebuild it later. We have shells to find. <gasps> Lily, I think we solved the mystery. Really? A hermit crab. Lots of hermit crabs and shells. Yes, we found them. But why did they take them? Hermit crabs don't grow their own shells. They live inside ones that other creatures leave behind. Like hand-me-down clothes? Wow! What happens when one grows too big for its shell? It leaves it behind and looks for a bigger shell until it finds one that makes it a perfect fit. Interesting! Whoa, that's neat! <laughs> like we did trying on different sun hats. I love collecting seashells. But these hermit crabs need them more than I do. Enjoy, little crabbies. Need any help building your sand castle? Aw, that's nice, Lily. Definitely. Of course. <gasps> At least it has antler holes now. <laughs> Makes it a perfect fit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chester. <laughs> I think somebody else has found a perfect fit, too. Right, Hermit Crab? <laughs> <laughs>